Good day, traders. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. We're going to talk about indices, commodities, uh, take a look at the bigger picture, dial in on the shorter term. Uh, before we get started, though, can I get a verification that you can see my screen, hear me loud and clear? <clears throat> Excuse me. It appears that everything is working fine. Before we get started, though, we've got to do the, uh, the usual risk disclaimer. Give yourself 10, 15 seconds, and then we will move on. Hypothetical trading. And then we'll get started. How you doing, Greta? All right, then. Uh, we'll get started with oil, since oil's had such a nasty move recently, right? Uh, the one thing... Uh, you know, and all this chop over here, it was it was very difficult to uh, to to make heads or tails from a directional standpoint. Obviously, when when the market's just chopping around like this, uh, yeah, you know, we had an ascending wedge of sorts building, and with the ascending wedge, you know, you, it's typically an ascending wedge is is considered bullish, but not necessarily so. And as we're seeing here, this is one of those things where you got to wait for the break. Uh, hey, how you doing, Steve? Good ride down on a cable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a big move there, huh? It's came down around that 121 line. Got a little bounce. But uh, so the one thing with oil is, and, and I'd been talking about this through a lot of this congestion period here. Uh, is that is that there was a lot of speculators that were long, and that and that gave me a lot of apprehension to thinking that we could move to the upside, and with that there was there was some fuel for the downside, as we're seeing, right? So this is a uh, this is a chart of the the COT, the weekly commitment of traders report, and the green line is the one we're going to focus on, and this is this is long speculators, and we can see that throughout this this congestion here. Uh, the the amount of of lar uh, large long speculators, so that would be like your hedge funds and and your your big trend followers, uh, continued to build their position, and the position exceeded the position that we saw back in uh, in 2014, and and that was you know something that we talked about in the the London FX and CFD trading webinar, uh, and and I never really showed a graph of it. I guess I'm showing it now. Uh, probably should have showed it sooner, but yeah, it, it was it was one of those situations where you had a lot of a lot of longs, right? You had a lot of long uh, speculators, and so when you have a lot of longs, it creates supply for for selling, and that's exactly what you know what we saw here. So while this move wasn't it wasn't easy to predict in terms of timing, uh, knowing that there was there was a, a, a pent up position. In the in the oil market and in, in the futures market, uh, there's there was a lot to be unloaded, and and obviously obviously we saw we saw a big move there, and and those those COT report the the positioning that I was just showing, this is obviously going to correct uh, after last week. This is only reflective of of last Tuesday, uh, so this next report that we get on Friday, uh, which will be through this Tuesday. Uh, will be more reflective uh, of, of of this down move, and, and we'll likely see a bigger unwinding. But there's still a lot to go, and so I, I think that yeah, you know, if we look at the weekly, if we look at the weekly, you know, there was there was a pretty nasty bar. Uh, it, we, we did nothing for for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, actually even months, and then in one week we had this big damaging bar. So I look for momentum. Whenever you get a break like that, a sudden break, you know, there's usually some more to go. Uh, and, and, and so right now I think what we're doing is we're working off you know, some of this oversold, short-term oversold conditions that we've got here. 
we're just working it off in terms of a time correction. We're sitting around the 200-day moving average, uh, which is obviously a focal point on the market. But we have done some damage here in terms of we, we broke this trend line going back to the the Feb 2016 low, and we're just kind of hanging out here. So I, I the the next point of interest is this this trend line that goes back to April that has uh, several inflection points. So I think that's going to be our next, uh, I think it's going to be the next spot. Uh, in terms of the timing of it, again, ideally we would see maybe a, a, a an attempt to push higher and then a rejection uh, to kind of indicate that, that it can't gain any traction to the upside, right? So if it can't gain any traction to the upside and we see it start to turn back lower, again, a time correction. You don't always need to correct in terms of price. You don't need to have a big rebound. Uh, sometimes all it takes is a little bit of time and once once this thing churns a little bit, can't turn back higher and erase much of these these recent losses, then you'll see some follow through a lot of times. So that's what I'm looking for is, is some more follow through uh, down towards say 47 and then maybe maybe we'll see a, a, a larger bounce here uh, after we have one more exhaustion move here lower. But I do think that that oil is at risk of, of having a much more substantial uh, decline and and getting down maybe even to the low 40s uh, before before eventually bottoming out here right now in the very short term it's there's not really you know even if we look at the you know we look at the two hour chart and we you know we got this kind of a willy-nilly trend line there uh, we could get some type of could get some type of bear flag situation here uh, which I would like to see develop a little bit more. I really would like to see kind of a, a push higher and then a sharp move back down, and then see and then see oil carry lower, uh, just to just to kind of test this this recent down move. But I definitely think that oil is 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 very heavy here, and uh, it certainly certainly could bleed out some more. Uh, let's take a look at gold. So gold broke. Gold broke a lot of support over here that we talked about. Uh, we had this, we had this triangle that broke up, hit this trend line, broke back below this trend, this trend line rising up from December. It broke the apex of this wedge, and it came down to support. We had pretty good support here. We had a nice, a couple of nice, uh, well, one really nice rejection bar here, uh, and and it really kind of solidified this 12, 16, 12, 12, 17 area as being. Uh, as being a, a, a good area of support and gold never even never even thought twice about it. Uh, it just just sailed on through. So we, we could see a little bounce here and ideally uh, ideally we could get up there and then maybe turn back lower but I'm not really sure that we're gonna you know this is this is what I was kind of getting at with with oil is that we did have a bounce yesterday. It was trying to carry through on this little reversal day, and then had another reversal day to the downside. Uh, this is this is certainly gold's having a hard time bouncing, and may not even see this as a as a retest. Uh, I think that I think that we're looking at maybe the 1180 line uh, as a possible uh, point where we could see a larger bounce. I keep double clicking on that. This is the dollar index. Uh, I kind of keep it hidden in the background. I don't like to get overly. Uh, we're going to talk about that here in a second, though. Uh, I don't, you know, for those of you who've been with me for a while, I don't really talk about correlations. Uh, in, in, you know, I don't try to analyze the the correlation too much because correlations tend to fall in and out of love, uh, and and then sometimes they can be misguiding. Uh, but certainly, you know, at times you're going to see where the correlation between gold and the dollar, or silver and the dollar, precious metals in general, uh, is is pretty stable on the on the flip side, on the inverse. Uh, but I do think that the, you know, speaking just generally about gold here, it's it's certainly weak. Uh, it's not. It's it's looking to me like it wants to head lower towards 1180. We have the FOMC coming up. Uh, we could get a do big dollar move out of that, uh, possibly. I mean, we, we they are basically pricing in a 100% chance of raising rates. A uh, quarter point. It'll be about you know language, how aggressive, 
you know, they appear that they want to be for the rest of the year. So we'll have to see on that. But as we saw on NFPs, had a good number dollar uh, dollar sold off. Uh, and, and maybe we'll get a similar situation with NFP or uh, with the FOMC. Uh, and in that case, maybe gold will get a, a, a little bit of a nudge. Uh, and then looking at silver, so silver, silver is even uh, is even weaker because it's already today it's already come back towards challenging this this Friday little Friday mini bounce. But again, silver had a little little reversal day, tried to make good on it uh, yesterday and then got rejected. And it came at this the 17 area, low 17s, uh, which goes all the way back to this this point back in June of last year. Uh, is when that really began as becoming a an important area, and as we can see here, we've got a lot of you know a lot of inflection points. Uh, it acted as support before, acted as resistance. It broke on through, never really it never really responded there on this decline, uh, but on this little bounce here, we're seeing that those low 17s are meaningful, uh, as yesterday we saw with with it getting uh, smacked down. There's really not a lot. Actually, I want to go back real quick. I'm sorry, I didn't look at the two-hour on gold. Gold right now is actually testing this trend line that it broke on the two-hour. So we had a strong downtrend. It is testing this little trend line here. This may be enough to to, to help give it a little bit of a boost uh, and and to keep a a a correct a corrective move uh, in play. Uh, but I don't consider, given the fact that this this does slope downward, I don't consider it to be. A very uh, a very solid level of support, and the same thing with with silver. Uh, it did break that that trend line, and, and likely wouldn't revisit again until we saw a, a move lower. And the further it gets out, the the less in play this line will be. Uh, but right now, you know, this this is not very inspiring price action. Uh, but again, we it, it, such a sharp move could use a little time. You use a little time to uh, to correct, and it may it may do that right into uh, to Wednesday uh, when we do have the FOMC. Uh, so we'll have to see. But looking at the dollar, uh, you know, the one thing with the dollar, and we've been talking about this, and and I'm going to go to let's switch to a four hour here. Uh, the one thing with the dollar is we were looking at this 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 choppy upward price action, and I the what I had said would interest me from the short side is if we broke the the lower trend line, we made the lower low, and then we got a bounce here, and that's exactly what we're getting. So we've got kind of a you know, what we got here is we got a double top, we've got a lower low, and a possible lower high here, and that's why I'm saying that maybe maybe with we we might get a you know we might get a big sell off here coming on the FOMC, and if that's the case, then we're going to see precious metals. If we get a big sell off on the dollar, it's not likely that you're going to see precious metal sell off too right so uh, with that said you know I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there's a chance that we could see a, a, a bigger uh, we could see a little bit more of a rebound out of precious metals what would be kind of nice to see is is if we did get a big dollar sell off and then we saw only a, a small amount of bounce out of gold and silver because when you think about a correlation right it doesn't really tell you anything about the magnitude it just tells you a directional uh, bias. So, it, what I would like to see is is maybe a big sell-off in the dollar uh, starts to develop, and only a small push higher uh, in in gold uh, and and silver, and and really kind of show that it's it's very weak, uh, you know, really show its true colors. And so that would be something that would be of interest there. But I mean, this right now to me is starting to look like a a bearish setup. Uh, with the dollar, so that's where I think that that maybe we could have a little bit more of a correction with uh, gold and silver. But uh, it, generally speaking, it's still uh, it's still they're they're still heavy. They're still very heavy. Uh, they've gone from precious to heavy metals. Uh, so uh, the, I'm not I, you know I don't I'm not a buyer there, even though even though the dollar is is looking like maybe it it, it does want to come off here. Uh, looking at copper. So copper had had this this nice little. I mean, it's not it's not the greatest, but it's because you've got a lot of got a lot of wave action going on here, a lot of swings. We had a head and shoulders. Um, we got a break. We've got a low, lower high, a low, 
looks like we're going to put another lower high. And when you look to the left, there's really not any good support until we get down here around 245. So I think that I think that uh, copper, uh, I think the copper's got some more room to go on the downside as well. Uh, and, and so with that with that in mind, uh, you know, it, it, it's just metals in general, commodities in general, right? Oil doesn't, you know, looks like maybe it could get a little more of a a time correction, a little bit of a bounce. Same thing with precious metals, copper, all falling in the same category. So it, it does look like uh, the commodity space in general uh, still has some more room to go uh, on the downside. Chandra asks, "Do you see a head and shoulders pattern in the USD? Are you referring to were you referring to that four-hour chart before? Are you you're talking about the uh, the daily? Yeah, I, I think you're talking about the daily, right? The daily or the four-hour? I'm sorry." Um, we had talked about this one possibility on the daily with this being a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder. It, it's getting to be a, a, an extended right shoulder. Um, yeah, it, it certainly still qualifies. I mean, I, um, I I like head and shoulders. It's one of my favorite patterns. It's not one of it. It is my favorite pattern. Uh, but anyways, it, ideally it would have had it would have started to to be a little more symmetrical and 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 had a smaller right shoulder, uh, but it still is, it still does qualify as a head and shoulders. It, it's getting to have a, a very elongated right shoulder here. Now again with that break here in the shorter term, and they were just talking about showing that four hour, right, looking at the four hour with this with this double top and then the lower low sequence and then now we're testing this trend line, you know, that could certainly, that could certainly round off and cap the uh, the right shoulder. Um, if if this is going to be the case, then I'd like to see it start moving lower, pronto, because uh, it certainly is losing its shape a bit here. Uh, and, and and again, you know, that's where we'll watch to see how metals react to that. If we in fact do uh, get a sell-off, and we do have the FOMC this week, NFPs we had the sell-off, the big sell-off there. Uh, so it's it's certainly possible that the same thing happens with the FOMC. I mean, we already know they're gonna raise rates. It's it's pretty much a certainty. Uh, I would say, barring a zero or fifty move, uh, you know, everybody's already expecting that quarter point. Let's look at now the indices. So the Nikkei. Let's just start with the Nikkei. I don't really, I don't really put a lot of focus on the Nikkei. Look at dollar yen. It's about like looking at the Nikkei in a in a roundabout way. Uh, it, it's still shaping up well. It's still consolidating. The only problem is, is that the Nikkei, really. So this is this is the first day of the year, right? It was on the on the fourth of January, and all of the year's gains have come on the first day of the year. No problem, Chandra. Uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, we've got the Nikkei. Really, it's all it's done is one day. It's kind of amazing when you think about it. Really, the, the the whole year is wrapped up in one trading day so far, uh, and then it's just been nothing but chop and slop. I mean, generally, this looks like it's going higher. It looks like it's going to 20, and then if you look at the depth of this 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 wedging formation, uh, and you were to extrapolate a measured move target uh, based on the depth. It brings you up to around 20,300, and then you've got these highs back in 2015 at 20,950. But the only problem I have is is that is that it's it's still it's lagging, uh, it's lagging significantly behind, you know, especially the U.S. indices, but even even Europe, uh, and and so to me it's it's still kind of heavy. Uh, even though it's a nice consolidation, I just don't like how it's happening after we've had such a big run up uh, everywhere else. Uh, but as long as the the big can stay in in the rest of the world, then this could certainly play play catch up, All right? So we could have a we could have a catch up move here. Uh, let's look at the DAX. So the DAX is at a is a very interesting spot here. Uh, we've got this this developing rising wedge. Uh, which which could certainly break to the upside and it could break to the downside, and that's the nature of the pattern. 
oftentimes a rising wedge after a very extended move uh, will be a warning of a top but not necessarily so uh, when they do act as a top they can be very powerful reversal patterns because you've got everybody kind of funneling in here accumulating from the long side by you know getting in getting in getting in and then when when the market starts to turn on them you've got a lot of you got a lot of stop loss selling going on and then also just naturally uh, equity markets have a have an upward bias uh, whereas say in currencies there's there's really no bias it's a, it's a pair right so if you could be you could be bullish on the euro against the dollar you could be bearish on the dollar versus the euro it's just it's a pair whereas whereas the the bias on Wall Street or you know in, in Frankfurt is is to the upside right that's that's just the, the nature of the stock market it's an investment vehicle so uh, there's very there's very few shorts in the in the market uh, when it comes to stocks so when when you get these patterns and they turn you know, they have there's a there's a long bias already built in uh, and so you have a lot of longs that that there will end up getting liquidated but as long as we hold this trend line you know, it can't be I can't be bearish at support uh, and if we look at the shorter term chart, oh, I don't know. Here we go. This is what I wanted. There we go. Uh, so we look at the shorter term chart. We can see it again, the two hour. And we're just kind of hanging out around this this trend line. So in the very short term, you know, again, you can see very very clearly here that there's there's good support here. Uh, have no interest in in being a a seller into this. This is, if anything, this is the line in the sand for the longs. Because if we start to break down, then things could start to accelerate to the downside. And likely, if that happens, we're, we're also seeing uh, the U.S. rollover, which also has its own trend line support that we'll look at here in a second. Uh, but we're funneling up here. You can see it in, on the two hour just as well. Uh, we're, we're definitely funneling up. I'd like to see another move up here before getting our, our final break to kind of fill out a little closer to the apex. But right now, sitting at support, and it's pretty hard to uh, it's pretty hard to be a uh, a bear at support, right? Now the CAC 40 also, unsurprisingly, has its own little uh, ascending wedge forming here. It's coming down to support right now this morning. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing that that take place so again just like the DAX and support until it's not looking at the daily now the, the, the CAC 40 is at a very interesting spot here uh, we've got some daily resistance over here uh, back in, in November of, of 2015 but if we go all the way out to a weekly this is all the way back to the 2000 highs crossing over the 2007 peak crossing over the peak in 2015 and that's where we are now so to me this is a very this is a very big spot here for uh, for the CAC uh, it, in terms of longer term this is this is huge uh, this trend line is, is definitely was definitely a, a, a capper in 2015 and and right now it's it, that's where it's struggling with if we continue to see some nice risk on uh, we continue to see the the U.S. kind of melt up, and and we see that DAX hold that trend line and break out towards its record highs at 12,000, what 391. Then then obviously it's going to be a a boom for the CAC, and 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 I could see then it breaking through this trend line, and in that case, uh, accelerating to the upside. Uh, but again, just getting back to the shorter term, you know, we've got that rising wedge, you know, where it's coming right up against that trend line. So we're coming at a very pivotal spot, and I and I see I can see where you know the the, the DAX and the CAC could be making some pretty uh, some pretty sizable moves here fairly soon, uh, just given where we are uh, in context overall on the charts. Uh, looking at the FTSE, so the FTSE, I really don't like when my charts get this many lines going on, but sometimes it just happens. Uh, so the FTSE has still got a nice little, it's still got a nice little trend higher, right? If we take off the, uh, let's see here, well, what the heck happened? I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to hide them because if I remove them, there we go. 
That was going to be upsetting. I was going to have to draw all those lines back in if I hit that little trash can. Uh, if we remove all the all, all the lines, we've got a nice, you know, we've got a generally, we've got a trend higher, but we've also got higher highs, higher lows, right? And then we slap the uh, the lines on the chart, and then all of a sudden, you know, your brain kind of seizes up for a moment. But we've got this 2013 topside trend line, which runs over. Uh, 2013, it runs over 2015, uh, and then it runs over this peak in January, and it's it's roughly where we are now. Uh, it, it hasn't. It, we reacted just ab above it, uh, but we could have been very well just reacting to this lower parallel. But again, you know, hiding hiding the tools. Uh, you know, you can see there's a clear uptrend here, and if we see the DAX hold start to move up. S&P's hold. You know, I think we're going to see the same thing. We've got. I know that we've got the the Article 50 situation. We've got the BOE. Um, but right now, Brexit doesn't seem to be a uh, a bad thing. Not when you. Not when you've, it's putting so much pressure on on uh, on sterling, and and sterling being that that the FTSE 100 consists of multinational companies. Uh, which make the majority of their profits outside of the UK when they repatriate those profits into into sterling uh, it, it, it certainly it helps boost their profits profitability so it's, it's actually a good thing uh, to have a very weak currency uh, for the FTSE 100 and until we see a really sharp rebound I think in, in, in sterling uh, then you know it's, this certainly is going to be an underpinning uh, for higher prices. Uh, with that said, I do think that the sterling versus the dollar cable uh, is at a very interesting spot down here at, at the 120, 121 area. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to respond there. We we've yet to see. You know, yesterday had a nice little bounce, and then today we're we're seeing that all wiped away, and and then some. So. It's hard to say what's what's going to go on exactly there just yet. Uh, the price section is a little murky, but just looking at the the indice, the index of, in of itself, and then looking at general risk sentiment, uh, you got to give the benefit of the doubt to the to the top side. Uh, and if we do, we can break on through to new highs and get above these these lines that are in the in, in close proximity right now. Break to new highs above the the early month highs uh, at 73.94. And this top side trend line, then I'll be looking at this upper parallel that belongs to this lower side trend line. And then we've got some trend lines that are passing over from last year and as well as, uh, as our, uh, 2015 that don't come in for quite a ways higher. So give me the benefit of the doubt to the trend higher right now. All right, S&P. So here it is, the S&P. Uh, the S&P came down and and it tagged this this February 16th trend line. This, this goes all the way back down to the, the lows uh, that was created uh, last year. Uh, so it was, that was when everybody was freaking out about China and uh, it turned out that they weren't gonna they weren't gonna have a hard landing after all. Uh, and, and we had that big bottom. And we can see that there's been some some play around around that line. That's where we came down to the other day. Had a nice little bounce. Uh, as long as you know, we've got this November trend line as well. As long as we hold these two lines, which come in around the same territory, right now, obviously it's going to be moving higher. But right now, it comes in around 2360. Then, then it then it favors to the upside. Uh, I really don't. I really don't see this being a uh, a bearish situation until we're able to break below those trend lines and make a lower low. Uh, below the low last week, which is, comes in at 23.54, so or 23.53 if you want to get below this level as well, then I, you know then maybe we'll get that lower low, and at that point maybe the DAX is breaking that trend line as well, and 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 perhaps we'll have a, a much larger sell-off. But right now it's it's difficult to be a bear, pretty much in any of the indices, right? Because of, we're, they're all sitting near uh, key key slope support. Take a look at the Dow. Uh, the Dow, you know, this one here, just gradual pullback, filled the gap, just kind of treading water sideways. Not a whole lot to say about the Dow. Uh, 
Um, Steve says, regarding SPX, does show value of including long-term, medium-term trend lines to help analysis? Yeah, I mean, um, well, even like, you know, looking at the, we were looking at the CAC there and saw how that one was really long-term. I mean, that thing goes back like 17 years. Uh, it, it certainly does help because if we start to turn lower or we start to break higher above that line, then, then you know, you can even shape your short, shorter term uh, bias around those lines. And the same thing with the SPX. I mean, I, I, the only reason I have that one, we'll go back to it real quick. Uh, the reason I have this in here is because we've still seen, you know, we still see play around it. Once, once a line starts losing its value, uh, and it has yet to do that, right? We just, we just validated it again. Uh, once it starts to lose its value or becomes obviously extended away from price, like if we were to get way down here, then this thing's not going to be in play anymore. And, and it wouldn't be in play for a very long time because by the time I got back up there, this line would be off my, off my page. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it does definitely, you know, even though it crosses through a lot of price action, if there's inflection points, then we certainly, you know, to me, you certainly got to keep it up there. Um, Steve, missed CAC 40, making tea. All right, well, we'll look at it one second uh, since Steve was making tea and wasn't paying attention. Uh, uh, we go back. We got this trend line off the 2,000 highs. That's what I was looking at, and and we're there now. So we've, we've had, this is the monthly. I think we just looked at the weekly, but, you know, we had this peak in 2000, 2007, obviously very, very big, significant turning points. 2015 was a pretty decent turning point. Obviously, it wasn't to the same magnitude, and we're back up there now. Uh, we're back up there now, so you know it's 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 a big spot. Now, getting back to the U.S., so we looked at the S&P, the Dow, uh, the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq broke this little channel here, but just because it broke the channel doesn't mean that it's bearish or anything. Uh, it's the strongest of the indices. I mean, here we are, back up here, highs. Um, to me, this is the one to to kind of you know if we're looking at we're looking at to the top side, you know this is the leader, right? So we want to keep an eye on this one and how this one continues to act as as we as we try to try to push higher here and and certainly if it were to to weaken relative to the S and P suddenly, um, then that would be something to think about as well. We have earnings season coming up, and the one thing about the Nasdaq 100 though is that it's controlled by a very few number of names. Uh, the, the NASDAQ 100, but like 30, over 30% 30 of the index is controlled by a handful of names. You know, looking at the Googles, you've got the two Googles, you've got Alphabet and then you got Google. Uh, and then you got Microsoft, you got Amazon, Apple, right? These are, these are big players uh, in that index. And so when the earnings come out, it can get a little skewed. Because you know one of them does really well or doesn't do very good, it, it'll it'll you know the whole index will reflect that, and so it's it, it can be a little deceptive around uh, earnings season. But certainly, it's a leader to the upside. I don't know. I don't really know how you can be bearish on this right now. Uh, I, I don't think with anything pulling back into support right now, the index indices that, that you can really be bearish. I think we've got to see some invasive price action before we can uh, turn bearish. Uh, that's so. That's it. That's it. The the uh, we took a look at uh, commodities. I think I think they got a little bit more to go on the downside. Got to watch the uh, we'll watch the price action here come around FOMC with the dollar. Uh, see if maybe maybe there won't be a little bit more of a, a time correction in, in the precious metals uh, and oil in particular because those are the ones that got hit the hardest. Copper. Is, is got a little bounce into it right now. It's not, you know, it's actually correcting in terms of price. Uh, and and with the indices, I don't, I don't see a reason to be a bear just yet. Uh, I know everybody wants to sell the darn things because they're they're hot, they're too high, quote unquote. Uh, but you know, I I really don't think it's a, I don't think we're at that point uh, where we can we can confidently turn bearish on the indices when they're either pulling back into support or like the NASDAQ 100 here for example is is up here at record highs so um, I think we kind of just kind of go with those those trends that we've seen uh, 
recently in the in the metals and, and oil and, and and I think we've we got to give the benefit of the doubt to the top side in the indices. For those of you who came late, I do record these. Um, or if you don't want to show up one day and you want to just watch them at your own leisure, uh, these are recorded. I do post them. They're posted on not only the YouTube channel but also under my author name. Uh, so if you want to go back and, and check them out, uh, they're always there uh, and available. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the, the usual uh, London uh, FX and CFD trading webinar. Uh, get a lot more into FX there. So if you have some FX questions, I'll certainly be uh, certainly be fielding those. It'll be, hang on one second, I'll just drop you guys a link for those of you who haven't already signed up before. Here's a link in the general chat box. Uh, and that'll be at the same time tomorrow, 10 GMT. Oh, I'll grab this one second. Uh, Steve says, thanks, Paul. Appreciate thoughts on Jesus. Oh, okay. I thought you had a question there. All right. Very good. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for your, uh, for your time and attention. And I hope everybody uh, has, a, has a good rest of the day. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at the same time.